We have exclusive new information tonight about the Jacob Wetterling investigation. Evidence from his 1989 disappearance is now ready to be analyzed. We watched dump trucks full of material leave the St. Joseph property for two days. And tonight, we're learning more about what will be done with all of that. Good evening. I'm Leah McLean. And I'm Megan Newquist. The Stearns County prosecutor spoke only with Five Eyewitness News about the next step in this high-profile investigation. Jennifer Griswold is live in St. Joseph tonight. Jenny. And Megan, today we are piecing together what was taken from the farm, both by talking to the county attorney and the family who lives there. All of Minnesota seemed to hold its breath this week, watching investigators dig, sift through dirt, and haul away evidence from this site where Jacob Wetterling was last seen. It was two busy days, and now the investigation could go back behind closed doors for months. Speaking exclusively to Five Eyewitness News, Stearns County Attorney Janelle Kendall referred to what was taken off the property as evidence and indicated we didn't see everything that was taken. Quote, some of that evidence includes truckloads of material that needs to be gone through, so this is simply going to take time, but it's absolutely worth the time and effort to get it right. The Rasier family told us the truckloads of what looked like dirt taken off their farm were actually mostly ash. The site investigators dug up, they say, is where they put ash from their wood-burning boiler that heats the farm. A court order would not allow the sheriff's department to discuss the investigation because it, quote, could cause future related searches to be unsuccessful. For 21 years, investigators have promised the Wetterlings they will find out what happened to their little boy. The county attorney remains committed, telling us, quote, we want to make absolutely 100 percent sure that this evidence has been fully analyzed and that the information that results is absolutely accurate. I spoke with Jacob's mom, Patty Wetterling, today. She told me she doesn't want anything like speculation to interfere with the integrity of this case. Live in St. Joseph, Jennifer Griswold, 5 Eyewitness News. I said it's the letter, so okay. Very good. Okay. Double okay. There's the letter. You've been served with it now. Here's uh, a little notice about uh, how people don't appreciate county Wait, attorneys. Terry Dean Nemers. Will you do me a favor and write that down? Sure, I'd be happy to. In fact, so then I have it all properly. Sure. In fact, it's all written right here on Lion News issue number four. Okay. okay in which, in which, yes, you're going to be getting this. In which Chad LaFell Larson, the former Pope County attorney, sent me a weapon in the Todd County Jail. So you've been notified of that felony. Okay, and you're Terry Yes, I am. I'm the one who had the weapon sent me into the Todd County Jail, which, of course, is a felony. Okay. And she'll look into all this stuff. That's fine. Like. I got no problem with that. That's the whole idea of it, so she gets a chance to look at it. Looks like this guy wants to look at it, so maybe he wants to be handed off a copy of it right away. <coughs> he wants to have a copy of it, too. Here you go. Here's an extra copy for you. Okay, if you like Do you want? I got your extra copies. So you want another copy? Oh, this is plenty. Thank okay. You. No problem. I'm, del I'm s s making sure that that got served on you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure I have no problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. You have a good day. You too. Yep. Coming? We had an armed escort here. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're the fortunate people. No, we got to go ahead. They got to make sure we get there in time. County Attorney's Office. No, nope, no SWAT team in here. Hi. Hi. How are you? 
Super, can't complain. I got an armed escort. Oh, they didn't want to come in. Here they come. My just appeared me. Yeah, that's right. They're harassing us here. We're down the treasurer auditor's office. Hey, county attorney, assistant county attorney. We need to talk to one of those guys. Okay. Actually, do you have a card of each one of the guys? Of all of them? Of all of them, yes, please. You speak up, I can't hear you. Our office would gladly listen to your concerns or complaints. We just ask that you submit them in writing. Submit them in writing? Yeah. Why is that? That's, that's what I was told. Okay, well, I need those cards that are in writing. Um, the fact that one guy was just here. Yep. You can actually ask for those in writing also. Oh, that's so so they so now the attorneys don't even want to come near me now because I gave them the information about Chad the Felon Larson last time I was here. I suppose now they don't want to be, they didn't like the idea of harboring a known felon, huh? Okay. I, I don't know what that's about, so... Well, well I understand that, because you're not an attorney, right? You're, maybe you're a legal aide or something like that, or legal secretary. But so, you know, th we gave them this information the last time that, that I was here about Chad the Felon Larson. You know, Douglas County attorney who engaged in a felony, sent me a weapon in the Todd County Jail. See, so obviously... They must think that coming in contact, you can take it. It's not, it's not poisonous or anything like that. <laughs> so, so obviously, they're invoking their right to remain silent because anything they say can and will be used against them in a court of law, right? Okay, sounds good. Well, there's an attorney right there. Hi, how's it going? Well, you take her easy. We got our film now. We're happy. So, What happened to our uh, other buddy? He another business. Oh, okay. Geez, we're major criminals. You think that you'd stick around? Oh, there he is. No personal calls. Security, I thought he said. Well, that, that should be in the police, I would have thought. Obviously, they can't do anything to us because they know. Come on in. You're safe. You got two responsible people. I mean, I'm talking about. John, I, mean, I, I assume five responsible people. In well, I'm, pre I'm presuming you are, too. <laughs> well, you might be making a big assumption there. I don't know. Well, you never know. That's that's easily possible. True, true enough. So I presume you're one of the assistant county attorneys. Yeah, do you mind if I read your shirt? Sure, go ahead. It says, malicious prosecution victim. It was those crooks from Pope County, wasn't it? And on the back it says, police brutality victim. It was those thugs from Polk County, wasn't it? And I've got the criminal charges filed against them to prove it, too. So Very unique. Well, have a good day. Thank you. Oh, say, i got a question for you, if you don't mind. I'll... Do you happen to know, seems like you're one of the guys that works up, one of the ladies that works up there. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to know who this guy is? Yes, I do. Could you tell me what his name is, please? Um, Matt Quinn. Okay, thank you. And what's this guy's name? Uh, uh, that's Dan. Dan somebody. Conlon. Conlon? Okay, so how many people work up there that you don't know their all, all their names? It, it's not that I don't know all their names, I was just, I don't refer to his last name very often. Oh, okay. You know, okay. so I was just searching. I, am, I would keep talking to you. I oh, that's fine. Court, I, so I, apologize. I appreciate your help, though, because they weren't very helpful upstairs. I think it was the last time I was here and I brought the camera. That kind of made them all shy up there. County Commissioner's Office. Come on, let's go. You can lead us. You can either lead or follow, one of the two. Bye.